Hello Drag Race fans and welcome back to yet another outfit ranking video where I discuss what my top 10 favorite looks are from a season of RuPaul's Drag Race. We are finally in season 9, a season where we are really getting into some super fun runway categories. Now I'm gonna be so real with every single one of you, this was one of the hardest outfit rankings so far to try and get down to a top 10 because like I said, we're finally in seasons where we are doing real runway prompts, not wear something that you can put on, wear something that goes with a wig, wear something that you might see your best friend Erica wearing to the mall. Finally, we've got real cool prompts like Club Kid and White Party, Faux Fur, Hometown, Gaga. There's some really, really, really cool prompts in here. And I loved this season a lot. It was hard to choose some, but I managed to get it there. And I am going to share all those with you. Now, remember before we get into this, that if your favorite look did not make it on here, this is my favorite grouping of runways. That does not mean that I'm saying that yours sucks, that your favorites are booty cheeks. These are what I liked and what I responded to and what I found memorable in the season. Okay, we're good. Let's move on. <laughs> I've gotten all these photos from the Drag Race Wiki. You will find the link if you'd like to go and explore those looks on your own and relive them in the description below. Without further ado, let's jump in. Starting at number 10 is Pheromone's White Party Realness. And I know y'all are probably already thinking, ugh, it's gonna be that kind of outfit ranking. No, it is not. I really like Farrah's White Party Realness because it lives in my brain and this presents sexiness and flirtiness and it feels like an actual party it feels like a drag queen who's going to an actual event party and a lot of these looks were just sort of fun looks but didn't feel like they were an event and that's what i think is fun about this is it looks like an event one of my biggest parameters when i'm thinking about favorite runways is could you look at this from a distance pull it out of drag race and without knowing the prompt, know what it's supposed to be. And I do believe you'd look at this and say, that looks like a white party look. Anyway, let's move on to in the number nine slot is Sasha Velour's best drag look. I really enjoyed this gorgeous hot pink with the sparkles, the little fisting gloves, and Sasha's iconic crown that she was wearing every week in confessionals. I really enjoy the makeup. I feel like this was the epitome of where Sasha was at that time. And this is a really cool time capsule to see where Sasha's makeup and fashion journey was. But it really highlighted the season. There's something vintage about this, which Sasha still does. There's something sort of garish and gaudy about it with this giant flower that's blooming right out of the titty. The sort of gall, audacity, gumption, and nerve to show up to the finale wearing a crown that's not really a crown it's like felt and other materials is really incredible the only thing i don't respond to very well is these shoes i think these shoes are kind of ugly and the gloves i think could maybe have been closer in color to the crown but it's not that big of a difference to be distracting i really enjoyed how sasha looked here and that's why she ended up in my number nine spot. Now, moving into the number eight spot is Sasha Velour's RuPaul Roast look. This look lives in my brain as well from this season. When I close my eyes and think about season nine, there are three distinct looks that show up in my brain. One of those is Peppermint's Peppermint look from the Club Kin Runway. Another is Trinity Taylor's Gaga look that vampire count that countess look from episode one and then this those are the three that pop into my brain immediately when i think of iconic moments of season nine these are the looks that my brain goes to i think about others of course once i start digging deeper in the catacombs of my mind there's others that show up and those are appearing on this list but this is one of those that was so smart and fun for a roast and you might not look at this and think well that's clearly a roast challenge or clearly a comedy challenge it looks when you were to, if you were to pull this out i think you would look at it and think um this is some type of avant-garde artsy runway but i don't really know what the challenge is supposed to be 
and ironic that it was about Michelle Visage, the Queen of Jersey. So, you know, this has nothing to do with the prompt in its own way, but it, it was very much in line with the prompt for what Sasha was doing during that roast, which was being smart and intelligent with her jokes. I really love this glove moment, and I, I love Sasha's dedication to these gloves with the flower brooch that we just saw in her finale look. Taking these iconic moments and bringing them all in an arc with this vintage style dress that matches the jacket, really smart shoes, the pops of red are brilliant. And I think this fascinating hentai pattern is not only flirty and fun sort of retro diva, but it also feels very current and now, or at least for the time period it did. I think this reads vintage, but also somehow still now. And that's what I like about it. Moving into the number seven slot is Shea Coulee's faux fur realness look. This is such a simplistic outfit. There's really not a ton going on, but it's brilliant. This Muppety look that Shea did. Shea walked so that Mo Hart could run. Because Mo's aesthetic on Drag Race was very Muppety. And I think this was sort of the blueprint for that. Because we saw a lot of these types of looks, not only in season 10, but also in All Stars 4. And I really think this is one of Shay's best looks of the whole season. On top of the fact that it's just fun and camp, and you would see this in a nightclub, but it's presentable enough for RuPaul's Drag Race. And I think when you can see something in a nightclub and on Drag Race, you've got something special. I love the styling of the hair, the sort of Ariana Grande moment, which was very of the time. All the girls were doing that hair. And I think this watermelon green pop of the shoes was so smart to contrast against the neon uh, of the dress itself. Because if you were to bring that neon green down into the shoes, I think it would be loud in a way that you don't want it to necessarily be loud. So this is a smart look for this category, and I really enjoy it because full fur, I think there's a lot of different ways your brain could go, but one of those I don't think many people would think, faux fur, I'm gonna do something puppety. And that's what she did, was went puppety with it, and I like that. Moving into the number six slot is Sasha Valora's hometown look, and Sasha has kind of been dominating my top 10 because I just really enjoyed what she did. I love this crown at the very beginning of the season, really showing this is who I am, this is what I'm gonna give you, this is what I'm gonna deliver, with this very sleek robe over the underwear, these sort of weird cowboy boots. I personally love the props. I know that Gaga and the judges didn't like how many props that she had. They told her she could have gotten rid of like one thing. It feels to me really grand and artistic and that's what Sasha does. If you've ever seen any of her performances from Nightgowns, you know that Sasha's brain is massive. She is thinking of so many concepts and enveloping them into one big mishmash that somehow works. And that's what this look does for me. I totally get it. I totally respond to it. It it reads like an art piece to me. And I think art should make you have a reaction of love it or hate it. I think art should make you have that sort of visceral reaction that the judges did have of, it was just too much. It was too many things going on. Art should do that. It should make you think. And I think this look makes me think. I look at this and I see art. I see hearts. I think New York is sort of like the heart of America. It's an art center. It's where so much art has originated. She looks like a walking art piece and I respond well to that. Coming at you in the number five slot is Trinity the Tux Lady Gaga look. And I already mentioned this is one of those top looks that pop into my brain. This Countess look is stunning. First off, we got to talk about the hair and how it is sculpted for the ages. And that's not a hair that's really easy to emulate. And it looks both hard and soft at the same time which is conveniently the exact same descriptor that I've had for someone that I've hooked up with before. I really enjoy the makeup. I enjoy the blood that's on the neck. We didn't really see a lot of blood up until this point. I think Redacted from season four was really one of the only queens 
whoever played with the idea of blood on the runway, we still really don't see that too often. Drag Race seems terrified of the concept of blood on the runway, but Trinity wasn't afraid to take it there. It wasn't as gory as it could have been, but it was still really elegant and beautiful at the same time. I enjoy this robe. It looks like it came out of the show. I enjoy the glove with it. Her presentation was lovely. And this photo, I don't think captures the essence of what that look was because it really felt so much like it came straight out of American Horror Story Hotel. Moving into the number four slot is Valentina's Club Kid Couture look. As a Valentina stan, I pretty much don't think that she can do anything wrong. And I could watch Valentina swish around and do almost nothing for hours on end. And this look, while it may not have been the most Club Kid look that it ever Club Kidded, I certainly think it was a really inventive take on the prompt. I enjoy the bodysuit with the belt and these really shiny, shimmery Selena boots, which I'm sure that that's what they were for. I love the capelet on here and all of the things that are attached to this. I love this very distinct Valentina red. I love that this feels very Latina at the same time and her branding has always been glamorous and very Latina and very celebratory of her culture and her heritage and I love that so much. I think this is a top tier look and it gave us one of the most iconic moments of any season of all time that people are still quoting to this day, love it or hate it, may I keep it on please, is still one of the most iconic lines from the show of all time. And this look has iconicism behind it, and it stays in my head, and that's why it's number four. In comparison to other looks, which were still really good, that I very much enjoyed, but this one was it for me. In the number three slot, and I did actually move this from an upper spot, this came down a little bit, because I thought more about it right before I started recording. This is from Sasha Velour's reunion look. And what I really enjoy about this is how spiky it all is. I like that there is this, not only the spikes on the head, right? But also on the bodysuit, this is a pretty difficult, dense fabric to work with. I've used this fabric one time and it's essentially a blanket. It does not breathe well. So the fact that she sat in that reunion wearing this is incredible, but also it's, it's just, it's dense to work with because it's meant to hold shape. And I don't think a lot of people would think to create a, a, a silhouette that has sharpness to it, that has pointiness to it. The construction of this is really immaculate and I'm a sucker for a fabric that's been rouged and teased and really just worked with an inch of its life. Like, this outfit has so much work put into it, but I don't know if I would look at this and think, like, that's been overworked. It doesn't look like an overworked garment. It looks like a really well-constructed, fabulous garment. And to be able to put this much detail in and not have it look like it has all that detail, like, you don't see the stitch. When I say those words, I mean you don't see the stitching. You don't see the problem areas that no doubt went into constructing this. It's just constructed well, and it's a strong look for a finale, and I think it really highlights who Sasha is and where she was going at that point, post Drag Race. In the number two slot is Shea Coulee's Club Kid Couture look. I think about Shea sitting down and untucked, not being able to talk, because whatever that was that was glued on her mouth inhibited her sound. So when she was talking, she really sounded like this the whole time. But I love that. I really am obsessed with this sort of Elizabethan clown collar. I love the crown that's on top. I love even this cheapish little band that she's got with the finger gloves and all the accessories and trinkets. I love the Rocky Horror teeth. It's so fun of a look. I enjoy this massive eyelash that's coming out. This you could completely look at from far away and say, that is a club kid look. This calls back to the age of the club kids dominating the nightclub scene 
and being literally a walking art statement. And that's what I love about this so much. Shay is an art piece here and it doesn't need anything more. And it's a great look. It's one of the best from that night. And now going in to the number one slot, and you may have been able to already guess based off of what I said earlier, but in the number one slot is Peppermint's Club Kid Couture Look. Now, this is branding perfectly house down boots. It's so perfectly Club Kid with the makeup. I really enjoy that this screams Peppermint without any question. The other thing that I think about with this look, if anyone remembers back to that original promo, when they showed elements of this season, they show a lot of the early parts of the season in promos. They very rarely show you up until top six. They, they typically will maybe show you as far as snatch game, maybe, which is sometimes a halfway point. They'll show you up to about top eight at the, the longest that they'll go into the season. They try to keep a lot of those looks under wraps, but this look, I very distinctly remember this moment where Peppermint is coming down the runway and licking that giant lollipop. And I remember every single week thinking to myself, where's the Peppermint lollipop look? That means she's got to make it one more week. And I was very excited for Peppermint her whole season. I really enjoyed her progress and her growth and all her presentations. So every week I kept thinking, okay, Peppermint's still safe because we haven't seen the lollipop look. We got closer and closer and closer to the end. We hadn't seen it. So finally when this showed, I was like, okay, we don't know if Peppermint's going to go any further. And she went all the way to the end. But this look was so, so good. And it still stands the test of time. I think one of my favorite elements is the lollipop staff. It's just so cool with the cellophane wrapped around it. She looks like a big piece of candy. And I love the detailing of putting a corset right over the middle so that it draws your eyes to the various shapes that she's doing. Because without that corset, it would just look like a mess. Even the bow tie, it would all look like a mess if that corset was not there to draw your eyes into the waist. Her boobs look great. I love that there's no gloves or anything to cover up her hands. I've mentioned before in looks like this where you cover up a lot of skin, you have to have moments where your skin is showing. And having her cleavage, her hands, and her feet visible is really smart. Plus that black corset in the middle, it gives you a lot of different eye draws so you can pull away from the, the chaoticness of the look. And it's good chaos, but it's absolutely chaos. And this is one of the most iconic looks from the entire season. I will not apologize or back down for this look. It is one of the best, and I think it represents Peppermint and Season 9 to a T. And with that, that has been my RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9 Top 10 Favorite Looks of All Time. What are your favorite looks from this season? And do you have any that when you think about nine, you could just recall it right away? It immediately comes to your brain. You think, I know exactly what that look was. I can name it from head to toe. And I will see you very soon for yet another Drag Race outfit ranking. Thank you for watching this. And if you enjoy Drag Race, check out some of my other playlists where we cover a lot of Drag Race content here. And if you like gaming, I also cover a lot of gaming things. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the flip. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Goodbye!